Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I wanted to show off um, something we've been working on for OpenRGB, and that is Project Aurora integration. So if you've never heard of Project Aurora before, it's basically an all-in-one RGB program that attempts to unite all the different proprietary manufacturer SDKs and also provide a ton of different game integrations um, for your RGB. So it'll light up your RGB setup, no matter what the brand, with effects that show off like health and ammo and anything else from uh, different games. And there are a whole bunch of different games supported, a whole bunch of different brands. Uh, here's a screenshot of what it looks like. And so normally Aurora only uses the proprietary SDKs that for each RGB manufacturer. But we've been working on getting it um, able to use OpenRGB as its backend. And this work has mostly been by Aurora developer Diogo TR7. Um, so right now he has it in a personal branch on his GitHub where he is working on the OpenRGB integration. And I've been helping out with that. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have the latest version of OpenRGB installed. So if you've already set it up uh, following my previous tutorial, we installed version 0 0.3 uh, from the releases. But we've changed some things since then, and it's necessary to have this latest version in order to use the Aurora integration branch. So we're going to go ahead and go to the pipelines, and that's this icon right here. Normally it's a green check mark, but there's some issues with the Linux build right now, and so it's failing. But that doesn't matter. Aurora is only available for Windows at the moment, so this only applies if you're using Windows. So we're going to go ahead and get the latest uh, Windows 64 build. So click uh, Build Windows 64, and then over here we'll click Download. And I'm just going to save that. And then... We'll open this uh, inside of this. It's a zip file that you'll download. Inside of there is a folder called build. And inside of there is a 7-zip file with um, the latest OpenRGB. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select my existing installation of OpenRGB, which you can get that by following my previous Windows tutorial. And uh, we're going to select everything except sizes.ors because that's like the configured sizes for my devices. And just delete it. And then I'm going to go into this new one and copy everything out of there and just drag it into here. So I've just updated my OpenRGB installation to the latest version from GitLab. Uh, and now I can go ahead and just run openrgb.exe and this will uh, bring up the newest version of OpenRGB and uh, so it's going to detect the devices and now we can see if I zoom out and look down at my stuff I can control the RGB uh, and that's basically as we've already seen in the previous video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the SDK server tab and in order to use Aurora or any other program that communicates with OpenRGB we have to start the SDK server. So we're just going to click the start server button and then this server status should say online. If we got to that point just minimize it. We're done with that for now. Uh, we can close out of um, the download that we had open. And now I'm just going to go. So here is the Aurora developers uh, personal GitHub branch, um, all of his builds. So we're going to look for the latest build that's in the feature slash OpenRGB branch, not OpenRGB-core, but feature slash OpenRGB. So seven days ago. This is the latest branch as of today. So I'm going to select that, 
go over here to artifacts and then we'll click on Aurora setup uh, .exe. The number might change if there are newer builds by the time you're downloading this, but we'll just go ahead and download that and save. And once that's downloaded, we'll just run it. It's a normal exe installer. So So here we have uh, the Aurora Setup Wizard. So I'm just going to go click through. Yes, um, I'm not going to bother with the desktop shortcut. Uh, OK. Let it install. OK, I'm going to close out of my browser here and also bring up OpenRGB in the background. So you can see right now it's showing nothing is connected. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, let it do launch Aurora and finish. And now we can see that Aurora has connected to OpenRGB. So that's good. Aurora is now controlling the lights. I'm going to minimize that again. Um, Aurora has this uh, first time setup. I think this may be if you have Razer devices. But I'm not using it with Synapse, so I'm just going to X out of this. We're using it with OpenRGB. And then, as you can see, all of my lights have gone dark because Aurora is now controlling. Uh, it looks like Aurora... Oh, okay, there it goes. It just took a little while to start up. So we can click... We can scroll down to the bottom and click this blue gear icon. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. And now I'm going to go over here to Device Manager and scroll down. And as we can see, OpenRGB is connected, but Razer is also connected. And since I want OpenRGB to control my Razer stuff, I'm going to go ahead and stop the Razer connection and just leave OpenRGB connected. Uh, so it's the only one that's, that's running. It will show all the different OpenRGB devices uh, and the connected string there. So now, in order to actually get the lights to turn on, we have to select a keyboard, a mouse, and then uh, do a little bit of setup. So we're going to pick our, pick our preferred keyboard layout. So I'm just going to pick US. Um, pick whatever fits your region. Um, preferred keyboard. Um, the way that it's set up right now, we want to pick a keyboard that has a light strip on the top. Uh, this is temporary. We are planning on improving this in the future, but right now all LED strip devices that are not keyboards or mice are going to be mapped to additional lights that are only present on certain keyboard layouts. Uh, so I'm going to pick um, HyperX Alloy Elite RGB from the list. Uh, so we have our keyboard here, and then I'm also going to pick a mouse that has both uh, logo and a scroll wheel. Uh, light and the uh, Corsair Saber is an example of one such mouse and so that should be enough to get started what we can see here is on my keyboard we now have the default effects which are um, a blue on the F keys and an orange on the uh, number row and I believe those are CPU and RAM usage indicators um, don't quote me on that. I don't exactly remember what they are, but I think that's what they are. And then you should also have um, overlays. So like the default Aurora profile shows like if you hit control, all the keys that have shortcuts with control light up and the same for Windows and uh, same for Alt. Um, and then it also has like this key ripple effect that goes on. Um, and if since we picked the keyboard that has all of these other zones at the top, whenever we do this, the effect actually goes across all open RGB devices. So then we can also set up various effects. 
And this is kind of getting a little outside the scope of what I wanted to show you in this video, but I'll go ahead and just set up an example effect to show you. Uh, I'm just going to rework this interactive layer. Uh, by default, it's interactive with a key wave. I'm going to change that. Let's just pick a, a, a radial gradient because it's simple. And so that's going to make the whole keyboard sort of do a rainbow pattern, as you can see on the preview there. And so if I go back to the keyboard, we can see that it has this effect going on. And then we can also see that the LED strips are following that same effect, including the ones in the case. So um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you is what Aurora is capable of when integrated with OpenRGB. And this build is ready for you to go out and download if you want to play with it. Only a few keyboards are supported at the moment, um, not all Razer keyboards. Most of the others that uh, OpenRGB supports will work, um, but we plan to improve this in the future. And then um, also you're able to use all the different game integrations with OpenRGB uh, through this, but I'm going to save those for another video. So thanks for watching. Bye.